Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And now here we, every man, our tongue wherein we were born. The Parthians and the Medes and the Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judicia and in Cappadocia, in Pontus and Asia and Pygaria and Pamphylia, in Egypt and in parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes and Greeks and Arabians and we do hear them speak in our tongue the wonderful works of God every man heard his own language because the Holy Ghost came upon them the Holy Ghost will come upon your life in the name of Jesus And the hand of God will go back to India. The hand of God will go back to Portugal. The hand of God will go back to Brazil. You will be his weapon. You will be his weapon. You will be his instrument. You will be his voice. Oh!
come to pass in the last days, saith God, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, 
And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaids will I pour out my spirit in those days. And they shall prophesy. He's speaking about a prophetic stream. Everyone will be able to break the frequencies of God. In that day, false prophets will lose their jobs because everyone can access the mind of God. It will be the manifestation of the mature church. Satan will be pushed backward and the glory of God will arise over many nations. Oh, Belgium, it is your time. France, it is your time. For the Lord will occasion a volcano in the spirit. A fire, molten fire from place to place and the infrastructure of the kingdom of darkness will crumble we worship you our king we celebrate your greatness we magnify you we glorify you in Jesus mighty name we have prayer somebody say amen. amen yeah you may be seated now what we just did is the practice of entering in yeah I'll make myself so real that there will be no doubt of my reality it means that if we practice true apostolic gathering, apostolic fellowshipping, then God will no longer be a story to our generation. He'll be visible for all eyes to see. The Bible speaks of the fellowship of the mystery, which is God's initiative to unpack himself. Where is you're tired. Amen. Don't be tired. Hallelujah. God's initiative to unpack himself to his people. It he, he comes through the fellowship of the mystery. That was what we were interfacing with. And as we begin to interface, if we had continued, say, for another um, 30 minutes, people will begin to prophesy. You won't need a preacher. The reason why we need preachers every day, you see, the apostolic church, <laughs> they didn't need preachers every day. There were times when the Holy Spirit took over the entire proceedings and he spoke according to his will. And even the preacher that day received the message from the Lord himself. There are powerful things that can happen when we practice apostolic gathering for the Bible says that where the carcass is there is something that occasions through gathering there the eagles will be gathered and this gathering is different from assembling because the idea of assembling if you have been to an assembly plant before Many different components are put together to form one unit. That's assembling. That's the kind of arrangement that takes place if we want to do corporate warfare. We'll be built into one warrior. That's the idea that is revealed in the book of Ephesians chapter 6. The corporate warrior. Even though the uh, lessons in Ephesians chapter 6 are applicable to the personal believer as he engages in spiritual warfare, the actual representation of that revelation is the corporate warrior. We are fused, we are assembled, we become one warrior. 
and we can take on the giants of the territory. We can take on the, the Nephilim of the land because we form a single warrior unit because of our assembling together. And that's different from gathering. Because the idea of gathering is fusing with the congregation which is in heaven. And then we operate in the same level of harmony. So that what is obtainable in the fellowship in heaven becomes obtainable in the fellowship that we have in London. In that atmosphere, anything is possible. Anything. The dead can come back to life. In that atmosphere, anything is possible. The sick can be healed. In that atmosphere, your eyes, you may never have seen a vision before, but in that atmosphere, your eyes can be open. How many of you perceived some things while we were doing what we did? You know, that thing doesn't have a name. It's just, it's gathering. <laughs> And I tried many times to stop, but I, I couldn't find the steering wheel. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so if we had gone for 30 minutes, people would start prophesying. And then you won't need a preacher. I'll come down from this exalted place. And he will be the one staring their face. I know you've not been in a meeting like that before, but it's you. That's, this is a rehearsal. That's how those meetings that you read about in the book of Acts chapter 5 last like nine hours. That's, the, that's a gathering where the steering wheel was handed out to the Holy Ghost. came. And he was slain. They buried him prayed over his grave and released him to eternity. Came back, the service was still going on. Then Sapphira came also with a lying spirit and she also was struck down and they bought land by the side of the husband. And that stuff is still continuing. It's, it's this kind of thing, alright? And it keeps going. And a time will come in the proceedings that they, there's a revelation of the holiness of God. You won't need Bible study to know holiness. It's the kind of thing that took place in the book of Isaiah chapter 6. And the prophet just strolled into that atmosphere where uh, God was in charge of the steering wheel. He was breaking out of himself. And there were seraphims there to protect his holiness. And then Isaiah found himself in the midst thereof. There was no evangelist, there was no preacher. But he knew, he began to confess his sins. I am a man of unclean lips. Yeah, hallelujah. Because it was the revelation of the holiness of God that began to flow out of the proceedings. Do you understand what I'm talking about? It's spontaneous. There are dimensions of God. That's why the average believer doesn't know God. Because all we know about God is in Bible study. Atmospheres have not been created for God himself to come out and become a spokesperson for himself. You know, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake unto the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken unto us by his son. If you go to the Old Testament, you, you find things like um, the statutes of God. Have you seen that before? You find things like the commandments of God. Have you seen that before? You find things like the laws of God. You find things like the testimony of God. I, do, has it occurred to you that all these things are not the same? No, they are not the same. Because when we talk about the testimonies of God, we are talking about God defining himself, explaining himself by himself. You know, a preacher can talk about God. A prophet can talk about God. But when God decides to talk about God by God, 
That's a testimony. You see, in atmospheres like that, the Lord descends in the midst of his people and begin to, begins to proclaim his name to his people. Begins to explain himself to the congregation. There is no encounter stronger than that. That was what made the apostolic church strong. God himself came down to speak about himself to them. And even though you persecuted them, they could not deny the encounters they had in times like this. Even though you put them in the arena and you let loose the lions, you could take away their physical life, but there was something you could not take away. It was crafted in the presence of God when God himself decided to descend among his people. If we had gone for like a few more minutes, you will see what I'm talking about. Dimensions of God will begin to let loose by itself. It will start with prophecy. People will begin to prophesy. It will continue to become more intense. More intense. Some people will start crying. You don't know why they are crying because nobody is beating them. Somebody will just notice that he can see no preacher praying for healing all of those things are actually in the presence of god and he says where two or three are gathered under the authority that is in my name they trap the dimensions my dimensions down in their midst and the things that will happen in their midst are the things that can only happen if i am there if you are still with me say Amen. I think I need to explain this a little more because uh, this is the soul of apostolic uh, fellowship. Uh, stepping into that place where even though we are in a physical location, you can make contact with an immaterial reality. You can touch an invincible person and the touch becomes so strong that you cannot deny that you were touched. I know most of you have not seen a shrine before. A shrine is a physical place where you can make contact with a spiritual person. It's built according to specifications, according to prescriptions that come from the dimension that is being mirrored. Are you here? <laughs> You're not here. You're not here. <laughs> I'm looking for a scripture with which I can explain what I'm talking about to you. Uh, that scripture may be first kings chapter six i'm trying to explain something very deep and um, looking for the right scripture sorry the holy ghost has changed my message okay i tried hard to get back to it and the message became he ran away and i sought it diligently it fell off so that's why I'm not um, subscribing to my study. You see, <laughs> when the Holy Ghost shows up, you don't have any other assignment other than to do what He is doing, so that the people can see and touch His reality. All right. So He takes us to First Kings. First Kings chapter 6. Ah. Okay, let's do verse, from verse 21. I don't have time to build it, but a shrine is a physical location where you can make contact with a, an invincible person, spiritual person. It's built with specifications, it's built with prescriptions consistent with the realm that is to be mirrored. Are you there? Once upon a time in a city in Nigeria called Zaria, 
I encountered a young man, and this young man was in the village at some point going to the stream to fetch water. I know you don't know what a stream is. Yeah. You know pipe born water, you don't know. Okay, I think you do. I think you do. All right, so. Um, yes, so uh, the United Kingdom is blessed with rivers and streams. So there are no piping points, there are no uh, water treatment uh, stations, there are no distribution conduits. Uh, what you have is a stream in a typical primitive environment. So this guy was headed for the stream and unfortunately for him, he was the only person at the stream at that time and a spirit hopped out of the water and suspended in the air and told him that we'll be looking for you to give you wisdom. He said, oh, I, I want wisdom. I, yeah, I like that thing. That thing you're talking about, I think I'm interested. And then the spirit gave him alligator pepe. Three. Oh, sorry. Do you know alligator pepe? You don't? What's the name here? What's the name of that? What? Use the microphone and say that name, okay? Scotch bonnet. bonnet. Scotch bonnet. Bonnet. Scotch bonnet. I think you can relate with that name. For the purpose of this lecture, we'll limit ourselves to that, that name. If you know the botanical name of alligator pepper, we don't need it now. We are, we are going with Scotch bonnet. So he was given three pieces of Scotch bonnet. You, you know why? The Spirit told him that he needs to go high before they can communicate. You understand know what I'm talking about? That he was too flat. He needs to, ah, then they can now communicate effectively. So he gave him scotch bonnet and he took three pieces and indeed have, have you tried it one piece of you go high <laughs> so he went high that was how the spirit revealed to him how to set up a shrine that mirrors his dimension you see every spirit is captured is held up in a dimension and there are furnitures there are infrastructure built in that dimension that makes that dimension that dimension so the spirit gave the young man a prescription of the things he can put in place that will mirror his dimension when his dimension is mirrored he can appear in that location where his dimension has been mimicked. And it won't look as if he changed realm. You are not with me. I'm trying to teach you something. Before we do 1 Kings 6, you know, most of you read the Bible, you don't allow the Holy Spirit to use your imagination to show you what it is. It's flat. So when the dimension of that spirit was mirrored, according to the prescription he was given by the spirit, when he took what? He went back, got a carpenter to build something, he set up the thing according to prescription, and then he said an incantation that was according to what he was taught, and then the spirit appeared. And the spirit in that environment could appear and give him wisdom. This is how to solve this. This is how to do this. So he was exercising priesthood. Because in priesthood, what we do is that we create earthly permission for heavenly interference. We invite the unseen dimension, the unseen divine dimension to come into our space and to help our infirmities. So he was able to tap into the dimension of that realm by setting up some infrastructure that mirrors 
that dimension so the spirit can appear in this environment because it looks like his own environment. Do you get that? That's the idea behind the temple, the temple of Solomon. It was built to accommodate the offices of angels. It was built to accommodate the office of human beings in service to God. You there? Oh, you're not with me. You're not with me. I don't know how, how I will help you. You see, I'm choosing my words carefully. Because these things, if you don't have utterance from God, you can't say them. All right? It was built also to accommodate the office of the cherubim. It was built to accommodate the office of God. So that means, when you are ministering in the temple, you know, it accommodates human offices. It accommodates angelic offices. It accommodates the office of cherubims. It accommodates the office of God. Built into one structure called a temple. Are you there? So you can now understand what happened in the book of Luke chapter 1 when Zechariah was ministering. The Lord fell on the family of Abiata, and he is from that line. And lots were casted, and he fell on him, and he was ministering, and Gabriel stood beside him. The reason why that was possible was because the temple was built to capture the dimensions of the angelic. So it, it is supposed to be commonplace. When you are ministering, there, you can be bumping into Gabriel, Michael. So, are you? You are not. You are not. You are not full. You are not fully what I'm talking about. Here. <laughs> it's just one scripture I'm trying to explain that I'm, I'm going through all of this. Oh my God. So it was built to capture those realms. So in that environment, meeting with angels supposed to be commonplace. Meanwhile, in your office at Canary Wharf, no angel is there. There's no angel in that place. You're just your computer and... <laughs> And demons are not. So, 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 but when you come into this place, you can bump into an angel. You can, you can meet with Angel Gabriel and say, Oh, how are you? I heard about you in the Bible. So you are real. See, yeah. So you can meet friends, angelic friends, cherub friends. That's the arrangement. And when you pass into the Holy of Holies, there's a design there. The design is that you find a cherub. Meanwhile, to interest you to know that cherubims protect God's glory and seraphims protect God's holiness. So if you see seraphims with six wings, know that the environment you just came into is the environment of holiness. I don't want to press. I don't want to press. Not now. When we, we would teach the Bible, eh? not just teaching it for you to know, we would show you heaven from the Bible so that you can walk into it and meet Apostle Paul and say, Hey, I heard of you! And come back. Yes, it is possible. You know, you say, Oh my God, may the Lord renew our mind Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. All right. So, it's built to capture the dimensions of angels. Notice what Gabriel said when he came into the temple as at the time that Zechariah was ministering before the Lord. He says, I... Okay. He said, but the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall not drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him. 
in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the law. Yes, next verse. And Zacharias said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? You know the meaning of that question? So you need to show me a sign that will give me a proof that this thing will happen. Because the guy doesn't know Gabriel. So I just met you. I don't know where you came from. What's the sign you give me to show that these things are steadfast? Are you there? Whereby shall I know this? For I'm, I'm an old man and my wife is well stricken in years. This is what Gabriel said. And the angel answering and said unto him, I am Gabriel. That's number one. I don't have time for that. Once upon a time, we're going to do that. First thing he said, what? I am Gabriel. There was no need for introduction before. But because you are questioning my authenticity, it's needful for me to tell you who I am and my designation. I am what? Gabriel. And who am I? I stand in the presence of God. Hey, hey, hey. Stop there, stop there. Um, where was Zachariah standing? You are not with me. You are not with me. You are not. With me. You are not, you are not. Now, it means, are you there? That there was a dimension of the presence of God that Gabriel knew that Zachariah did not know. So even though Zachariah prayed, he didn't know his prayer was answered. He took another servant from another realm of heaven, another realm of God's presence. He had details about the answers to the prayers he'd been praying. Are you, are you there? Can you see that these things are dimensional? There was a dimension where Zechariah was, and there was a dimension where Gabriel was. So Gabriel came from a dimension to meet with Zechariah in his own dimension, to tell him things that are commonplace in his dimension, and they were strange to Are you there? So when we create that atmosphere, what happens is that beings of other dimensions in the realm of the kingdom of our father, they begin to collocate, they begin to come down. So it is possible for us to access things that are not known in our dimension. Have you seen a cherubim before? Because I have. You know, mm, you see, they sing now. The angels sing. They sing. Now let me, let me tell you their song. Okay. Where's my man? Okay, are you there? And crown him Oh, that's what they, they are saying. I know you don't believe, but there will be a proof. And cry. <laughs> 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 yeah, go on. And cry. Is I cope minele? Savoli ma wasale. Iscopeso sombris capande i copado. Capia si che combene. Cuscabomo i fabali askelibonde sa avai mamma combolo i sobori a baba. E si amo i soseli. Ovia. Esco fele mo bo se li amo kadi si ama mano oh oh 
refreshing that just oozed out there is a dimension that we trapped and the manifestations we are going to see is according to the dimensions that we have trapped oh my god we can trap the dimensions of cherubims can trap the dimension of angelic messengers the ones that traffic with messages the experience transcends human explanation that's why it's called glory 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 And we give you praise forever. We magnify your name. I saw Sunny Mohombre. 
Ramos y cosa la baburia, ale más. Alaba mosantelia, brisco falamai. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Part of what God wants to do in this morning service is to empower the ministers of the gospel. There is a wave of grace that God is making available to make us more effective to proclaim his kingdom in this season. There is a wave. You know, it's called glory. It's called glory because there are no words to explain it. It is what it is. It is occasioned by the weight of his glory. The more of the weight of his presence that comes, the more dimensions we have access to. And those dimensions will be at liberty to begin to operate, to begin to roll out in our midst. And everyone will wonder at the majesty of God. And the fire is coming back to the United Kingdom. The glory. those dimensions down then the realities of those dimensions pass into our own realm then you will realize that God built senses in your spirit that can relate with invincible dimension the Lord will no longer be a stranger to you in the name of Jesus Christ. So if you are in this place, can you ask him to empower you? Because that's what he wants to do. Empowerment. He wants to empower you. To bear witness of his resurrection. So like uh <laughs> 